In 1778, under orders from Benjamin Franklin, John Paul Jones led an attack on Whitehaven. The intention was to burn ships in the port. Unfortunately, one of his boatloads of men went on a drinking spree in the port instead and alerted the town to the intended raid. John Paul still managed to set fire to some ships, but had to make a hasty exit. He sailed from there to Kukubri, where he intended to take the Earl of Selkirk hostage as a means of making good on the so far disastrous mission. The Earl lived here on St Mary's Isle in a mansion. When John Paul landed, he spoke to a gardener who told him the Earl was away on business. He'd already told the gardener that he and his men were a press gang looking for recruits, so the gardener made sure all the young lads who worked on the Earl's estate were nowhere to be found. Now, John Paul had wanted to leave as soon as he heard that the Earl was away, but his officers insisted to him that they needed to take some loot as a reprisal against the British. He allowed his men to go on to the mansion, providing they harmed no one and only took the silver and nothing else. The Countess was at breakfast when the men arrived at her door, yet it was a very civil robbery, robbery. and Lady Selkirk was soon chatting away quite happily, asking questions about America. The young officers asked for the silver inventory of the house, and when they checked everything against it, they discovered they were missing the tea and coffee pot that were, in fact, still among the breakfast things on the table. They took these two but were treated to a glass of wine by the Countess before they left to return to the ship. By the time they returned, the town had been alerted to their raid and a cannon was moved to the point of the isle to shoot at them. They got away, but then found themselves being pursued by a custom ship until they managed to leave the Solway. John Paul Jones stayed with the American Navy until the war ended, then became the Admiral of Catherine the Great's Black Sea Fleet, where he had some notable success in their war with Turkey. When he then left the Russian Navy, he returned to live in Paris. He became sick and died a pauper, so he's buried in an unmarked grave at the Protestant cemetery in Paris. His body was later disinterred and shipped to the US, where it was buried in a mausoleum at the Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland.